Forensic scheduling is related to project planning and scheduling, but it is not just a subset of planning. Actions that may be sufficient for the purpose of project planning and scheduling are not necessarily sufficient to conduct a forensic schedule and whereas the planning nor scheduling actions does not show cause or responsibility for delays. There is no 100% accurate way to analyze the timeline. The level of accuracy of the answers produced by each method is related to the quality of the data used in it, the ends, and the subjective judgments made by the forensic analyst. Departures from recommended protocols should not automatically be treated as an error. Forensic scheduling analysis passes through five main stations. First the organization of analysis techniques, second the validation of data source. The third station is how to implement each method of analysis. The fourth station is the analysis evaluation. The fifth station is how to choose the convenient method for the case of study. What we should study about forensic scheduling? 1. The methods used to analyze the delay and the different methodologies appropriate for each case under study. 2. Considerations affecting the choice of analytical techniques will be discussed of advantages and disadvantages. 3. What are the caveats and considerations for the use of each method? 4. What are the current best practices for each method? 5. How timelines generated by the planning process and project records become the data and so the data and sources for conducting the analysis? 6. How is the investigation of events carried out using methodologies that depend or not rely on the logic of the CPM? 7. How to monitor the events that have already taken place in order to understand a station or a series of deviations from the plan and the role of those events in influencing the sequence of tasks within the network of project activities. Eight. How to classify the methodologies for studying and analyzing delays according to the timing of the occurrence of the causes leading to the delay compared to the timing of preparing the study and analysis? 9. How to classify the method studying and analyzing delays according to the size of the analyst's intervention by making adjustments to the time programs? 10. How to classify methodologies for studying and analyzing delays according to the inclusion or deletion of activities representing delays? 11. How to classify methodologies for studying and analyzing delays according to the use of a single logic for the time program or by using a variable logic with updates or modifications to the program? 12. How to study and analyze the delays in the absence of a baseline RAM and no updates to the baseline? 13. How to verify the available data before conducting the analysis to ensure the validity of the data and its suitability for conducting the analysis, whether checking the baseline program, checking the actual as built program, checking the, sch the schedule updates? It's 14. What are the modifications or changes that may be included in the schedule updates? 15. How to recreate the updates and how to evaluate the remaining duration of the activities being implemented using behind sight or blind sight? 16. What are the deviations in the e-activity level and how are they classified as delays? 17. How to create a schedule as it was actually built and determine the critical path built and the controlling activities? 18. What are the important key concepts associated with delay analysis such as delay concurrency, float criticality, 
constructive acceleration, recovery schedules, disruption and lost productivity, delay mitigation. These problems always giving rise, giving rise to disputes because they are intertwined with justification for delay. 19. How to determine or the actual damages resulting from the delay or compensation for the expenses of extending the time of the project? Twenty. How to prove concurrent delay? 21. What is the difference between using both the literal theory and the functional theory in estimating concurrency? 22. How to determine the critical and semi-critical activity? 23. Who owns the float in the project and its impact on the contractor's right to slow down the pace of work? 24. What is the difference between directed acceleration, constructive acceleration, and efforts to mitigate delay, and its relationship to cessation? 25. Cases of study to illustrate the different methods of delay analysis methodologies and how to draw conclusions and compare them.